Hello everyone and welcome to our channel Physiosaurus. In today's video, I am going to talk about the kinematics of the hip complex. Okay, so in kinematics, we basically study about the motion occurring in the particular joint. Okay, so in this, we will talk about the motion of hip joint. See, there are two types of uh, motion which occur in the hip complex. So in one kind of movement, the femur is fixed. Okay, femur is fixed. So pelvis is moved. Okay, pelvis is moved. And in the second type of motion, the pelvis bone, pelvis bone is fixed at the point. Okay, while the femur moves on the pelvis and femur moves on pelvis. So we will talk about the kinematics one by one. So in the first case scenario, I'm talking about motion of femur, motion of femur in the fixed pelvis. Okay, fixed pelvis. So here the pelvis bone or the hip bone is fixed at a certain in its location and the femur bone is moved over the fixed pelvis. So there are six kinds of movement occurs in this uh, category. So the first is flexion movement. Okay, flexion. Now the flexion movement occurs in the frontal axis, frontal axis and sagittal plane. Okay, in short form I have written SP. Okay, now if you talk about the osteokinematics, osteokinematics in the flexion. So here femur bone moves forward okay forward and if we talk about its range of motion so the flexion range of motion of flexion is 0 degree to 120 degrees okay and the last part is the orthokinematics okay orthokinematics in the orthokinematics we talk about the gliding and the sliding movement okay so here as you all know that the femur, so femur bone basically look like this, its head, suppose that this is femoral head. So here the surface, it is convex surface and since here the femur moves in the fixed pelvis, so convex surface, convex moves over concave, okay, concave surface. So here the gliding is the gliding is in posterior direction, posterior direction. Why gliding is in posterior direction? Because when convex surface moves over concave surface, then the gliding movement occurs opposite to that of the movement. Okay. Now we'll talk about the second movement, which is extension completely opposite of flexion. Again, extension movements occur in the frontal axis and sagittal plane okay f a and s p okay now here if we talk about its osteokinematics then here the femur moves femur moves in the backward direction okay backward direction and the range of motion of extension is 0 degree to 35 degree okay 0 degree to 35 degree. Now, if you talk about its orthokinematics, then here again convex surface moves over concave surface, okay, concave surface. So, the gliding is in opposite direction, which will be in the anterior direction. Now, let's talk about the third movement, which is abduction movement, okay, abduction movement. Now, the abduction movement happens in the sagittal axis and in the frontal plane. Okay, sagittal axis and in the frontal plane. So if you will see uh, in extension or in flexion, okay, or in flexion here, the, uh, flexion and extension movement they both occurs in the frontal axis and sagittal plane. But here in the abduction, it occurs in the sagittal axis and in the frontal plane. Okay. Now, we'll talk about its osteokinematics, osteokinematics, okay. Here, 
in the abduction movement femur moves medially sorry not medially in the laterally upward okay in the laterally upward direction and the range of motion for abduction is 0 degree to 45 degrees okay now we will talk about its orthokinematics orthokinematics so here again the convex surface moves over concave surface okay concave surface so here the gliding is in gliding is in inferior direction okay inferior direction so now you are talking about the fourth movement which is adduction okay so adduction movement also happens in the same axis and plane uh, which is sagittal axis okay sagittal axis and in the frontal plane in the frontal plane okay if we talk about its osteokinematics its osteokinematics then here the femur moves medially downward direction medially downward direction okay and the range of motion for adduction is 45 degree to the 0 degree okay and if we talk about its orthokinematics then here as you know that here convex surface moves over concave surface so the gliding and the sliding movement will be opposite to that which means that gliding will be in the superior direction okay superior direction now let's talk about the fifth and the sixth movement which is medial rotation and lateral rotation now let's talk about the differences between the medial rotation and lateral rotation one by one see medial and lateral rotation they both happens in the vertical axis and transverse plane okay vertical axis and transverse plane now if you talk about its osteokinematics its osteokinematics then in the medial rotation the greater trochanter of the femur bone okay greater trochanter greater trochanter of femur bone moves forward moves forward in relation with the with the anterior part of pelvis okay anterior part of pelvis and here in the lateral rotation the greater trochanter of the femur moves backward in the relation of uh, anterior part of the pelvis so here in the medial rotation the greater trochanter was moving forward while in the lateral rotation greater trochanter was moving backward in relation with the anterior part of the hip bone now let's talk about the range of motion for these two movements so range of motion for medial rotation is 0 degree to 35 degrees while the range of motion for lateral rotation is 0 degree to 45 degree now let's talk about the orthokinematics okay orthokinematics now as you all know here again convex surface is moving on the concave surface in both of the cases so the gliding or the sliding movement will be opposite to the physiological movement and here you know that the uh, greater trochanter was moving forward so the sliding okay the sliding will opposite uh, will be opposite to that and so so thus the sliding will be posterior okay posterior and here the sliding will be anterior okay because the greater trochanter was moving backward in relation to the pelvis bone so now 
see this picture to understand how the flexion and extension and all those six movement happens. So here the first picture in the left side, it shows the flexion, okay? Here, this one is the flexion movement. So as you can see here, the leg moves forward and if the leg moves backward, then it is the extension movement. So, and internal and external rotation happens like this, okay? Like this one. And the abduction and adduction movement happens like this. When the both thighs are closer to each other, then the movement is adduction. And the both thighs, when they are far away from each other, then these are known as abduction. Now here, uh, to perform the adduction movement, the thighs must be or you know the leg must be hip joint must be in slight flexion okay so this is not a very pure planar motion so thank you so much for watching this video this video was all about the movement of femur on the fixed pelvis in the next video i'll talk about the movement of pelvis on the fixed femur